started. First of all, thank you for coming today. No, just, just I just started. Why, you want to come no. me, accompany me? <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? I'm doing a focus group. Oh. So we're just going to ask for feedback. Okay. Okay. All right. I got focus. All right. All right. Thank you, Ms. Fan. <laughs> anyway, guys. So. <coughs> Can I have a, um, I don't know if we're going to have a note taker. I'm supposed to have two other facilitators here, and they're not here yet. All right. So first I want to thank you for coming out on Saturday. Because I know it's very difficult to come out on Saturday. Because I would like to be Sleeping. watching uh, Tony Braxton or Tamar Braxton right now. Oh, I'm right. <laughs> sleeping in. They don't have to be the <laughs> it's on demand, so I'm cool. <laughs> Right. Um, so the, we just want to ask you questions. We want to ask you some feedback. We got a couple of questions here. It's eight questions, and uh, the first question is: What are your thoughts about the blended learning exercises you participated in this morning? I love so it. if we could just have maybe two of you just talk about the experience. So we got eight questions. We're running out of time, and I want to I want to be mindful of the time. So the question is: What are your thoughts? about the blended ex blended learning exercises you participated this morning. Blended learning. Anybody? She want, you want to go first? No, you can go first. I love it because some children learn by seeing, some people learn by hearing, and he, he talks himself, and he has them read and listen on the computers because we had to write a paragraph after watching, viewing a video. And he comes and interacts with the children, not really one-on-one, -on -one, but in smaller groups. Mm -hmm. And that gives some of the kids, or I would think it'll give some of the kids the confidence to ask a question because they're not in front of a whole mm -hmm. classroom of 30. Be, yeah. or yeah. So they'll be more forward to ask a question than to sit in the back of the class and duck their heads and miss out on an opportunity because of what somebody might say or you're slowing down the class or go learn some more or whatever ignorance will come out of some children's mouths. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that, that's, that's a good one, right? We're all in agreement yes. with that? Yes. Okay. Yes. Anybody else <coughs> want to talk about that? Danica? Also, is, um, he, like, he didn't get, get to a lot of the things he was on a strict time, but um, he was saying that how he will pair the students up with each other, so that gives them peer relations, interaction, which I feel is very important because a lot of kids feel intimidated by the next peer that they're because they might feel like they're smarter than the next one. So it gives them like interaction as far as peers, and like she said, um, you know, by one being in the back, it gives him time to deal with this right here and just walk around and just see what they're doing, and then he rotates. So I think, and then he's also involved hands on. So I think that's good. So it's not like a teacher just sitting in front of a, a board saying, okay, this is your work and here you go and that's it. So um, I felt that was, that was excellent. Good. All right, everybody's in agreement with that? Mm -hmm. All right, so we're moving on to number two. <laughs> Do you think it is important for your children to be taught using a blended learning approach? Why or why not? Anybody else? That's where you can see what their strongness is, like she said, where like some like you said, some kids listen, hear better, like you know, you know, learn better by hearing or seeing. I know my daughter told me that she learned she learned better by um, listening and looking like. So to her, like that'd be better for her like to be on the computer. Mm -hmm. You know, because she's seeing and then she's hearing. But like some people like they want to have like hands on with a teacher. Like you said, to feel more confident that you know you're on the right track and doing what you want. Yeah. I hope it makes sense. No, you know. your name again? Marcella. Marcella, great point. Great point. Um, anybody else? Why or why not? This approach is um, it's a good thing for our children. Anybody else? Okay, we're moving on to the question. Okay. It is it's good. good. Yes, it it's is good. good. So we thought everybody says it's good. No, because I have done this in my life. So that it makes the classroom more manageable. Mm. And you know what? It enhanced the classroom because some, you know, when it, there's one person teaching here all the time and everybody has to listen, mm -hmm. you know, they are distracted. Mm -hmm. So, but when we have little, little groups giving them the same thing to do, but do do it, you do this portion, you do this portion, and together they all learn the same thing. So it makes the classroom a better place 
for the students. So do you feel like better now advice. from your question from earlier? Yeah. Do you feel better? I, mean, I see that they are doing like this part because right. I say that they were so only talking about technology. Mm, okay. They were only talking about technology. So they, they were talking about the other part that was yeah. happening. Yes, they admit I was looking for something more. They did. Okay. They did. All right, so she found it here. Yeah. Found it here. I see some of it here. Can I ask her? Her? Check it out. Is she saying it more like it's like, uh, like, not like, it's not like a teacher aid, but like it's like a function of like another teacher in the class, like you said, the the computers keeping them focused mm -hmm. and also helping them learn, as well as, like you said, the kids on this side, well, he like, you do it like himself. Mm -hmm. To me, that's what I think it needs to be done anyway, because like, all of a sudden he just started kindergarten and his teacher got 21 kids and had 20 mm -hmm. kids in that class, and he still keep I, I, she's a real good teacher. And how her learning, how she teaches, you can tell the kids learn fast. Because over the summer, not to be saying, I um, not to get other subject either. I wasn't on my thing. I was so busy with helping, my, you know, I have a lot of sick people in my family. Mm -hmm. So I was helping out. And plus, I wasn't on my game to help him do his ABCs and one of the And I noticed this even in her class, the way she teach, he's picked it up fast. So he, now he's even saying sound of the letters. And well, I wonder if she's using that. Why don't you talk to her about that? She don't, I want to tell you, she don't use, I don't know if she used, the, she had computers in her class. Mm -hmm. I don't really see that when I've been there for like the beginning of the class mm -hmm. in the morning, because I've stayed until like 11.30 to special start. Um, and I noticed, I don't see them on a computer. She does a lot of stuff mainly because she said they won't even give her stuff like computer stuff in her class. Oh, so the she, she will rip, I mean, when I mean she's one of them old back teachers, mm -hmm. she's one of them old back teachers and what she's doing, how she's doing it, she give them a little bit, a little bit of everything. Like she'll have a frog on a picture, and I, that she claimed that's part of her science. Mm -hmm. Everything is a little bit of everything, like dibble dabble. Gotcha. And she continue, like she'll move from the carpet. She does a lot of stuff in the carpet, but uh, in a group. But I don't know. She good. I, I don't know. She's a that's good. That's she good. good. That's yeah. good to hear. And she's very strict. That's good. That's the thanks, Marcella, for yeah. sharing. Um, so number one, we move on to number three. What do you think the positive results of using a blended learning approach would be? Hi, your test bring. Okay. Higher test rates. Just higher test rates, Caroline. Um, you need more self um, confidence. security confidence. Security confidence, okay. Also, giving the, um, the student responsibility for their own self. All right, all right. Tiny yeah. dropouts. Let's drop out. That's good. That's good. I like to say that, but more and more in technology learning about what is available to them okay. through the good, internet. Good, good. Using it in a positive way, right? Yeah. Is attendance Richard, did you have a? Yeah, more courageous. More courageous. Yeah. Attendance, I think. Attendance. Mm -hmm. You could it'll improve attendance. Yes. And active also. Active. Yeah. Because yeah, it goes back to, sorry, but it goes back to what the guy was saying earlier about <coughs> one to be at one student during her junior year. She never barely attended class, and then when he started doing the blended learning approach, here this student was again taking that class, and she she Found actually herself. grabbed great, right. and I and that's and that just like makes me feel good, even though it's not my child, but it makes me feel good mm -hmm. just to know that this we're closer and closer to that approach to letting kids be responsible for their own actions. Mm -hmm. So it's not all on the teacher, it's not all on the parent, right. and not only that, it, it, it gets the mindset for college readiness. That's right. So. That's right. So anybody else? Yes, sir. I was saying this, this is very positive, but like he was saying, <clears throat> there's challenges too because as a teacher. You have to be able to monitor all these different pieces going on in the classroom, right? So that's why I asked him, are teachers being trained how to do this? Because all this technology is good, but you have to be able to manage it. You have to be able to know how, how students are asked. Because they can be on there and the teacher can be, have no idea what they're doing, right? <laughs> so because kids are smart. You tell yeah. them to go on one thing and next yeah. thing you know, they're playing a game or doing something else. So, so, as a teacher, I think oh, yeah. it's very important, especially, I, I don't know how this has been worked with the older teacher, old school teacher, which may yeah. not be, you know, as adaptable to the new technology. I think it's a great tool. However, it, it needs to be managed properly, right? And it needs to be organized. Absolutely. Yeah, but it's, it is a great tool because I use... Um, something called Khan Academy, Khan you probably Academy, know yes. about it. Mm -hmm. My son loves it, so if he's having a problem in school understanding addition and subtraction, we just, I pull up my phone and we watch a video for like eight minutes, and he's like, wow, I actually get that. So it's a supplement, a great supplement to what's being learned in the classroom. He can't, you know, the teacher doesn't have enough time to be one-on-one -on -one with every student, however, the technology 
it's a tool that can enhance that. Okay. So it's great. Okay. Thank what, you for sharing. What is the thing on the phone you use? Khan Academy. Well, I'll, I'll tell you about okay. that later. It's like a video, video of every, of, of like additions. A, a guy doing a video of, you know, take things that kids may struggle with in school, but in a different, whole, in a, in yeah, a more personal like, format. It's, it's, it's a website like, with videos. It's spelled like this. It's like this. Yeah, I will encourage every parent to take a look at this. It's great. It's an organization. Started off with a guy that was trying to help his mother. I do that thing. Was trying to help his I do that thing. With a math problem. Yeah. And he was sending little YouTube videos to his mother. Mm -hmm. And the mother was like, and then he was the founder of this, and then Microsoft helped him out to. Keep it now, do they use some of this in the classroom? They do. They yeah. do. They actually do. That's one of the ways. But yep. wow. So let's go on to move to number four, which was, which is, what are the drawbacks you see to using this approach in the classroom? Which you already mentioned, professional development. Any other drawback that you can see using this in the classroom? That it should not be the only resource used. Because if technology decide to, the lights decide to go off, you know. Books are always available. That's right. right. Yeah, able to use the library. Balance approach. He mentioned, it, he mentioned it also that, you know, some students just want that um, regular way of, um, of teaching, um, the fast way, which is, okay, just give me an assignment and just give me the paper and I'll do it. So I think if you blend that in with the blended learning, I think it'll be successful. Right. So I think so too. Yeah. So the blend, the blended learning. Just to, just to be clear, the blended learning is that is using the traditional, right? right. Somewhere in between. Along with the, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So we want to make sure that we we have that um, in our, approach in our, in our we have that in our minds where blended learning is what happens in between. Right? Right. So it's a little bit of traditional mm -hmm. and a little bit of. Technology, right, and then the learning in between, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, so do you think using a blended learning approach would affect your children in the out of school hours mm -hmm. at all? This could be either something positive or something negative. Like I said, technology is everywhere. So. Like you said, management. If parents don't know how to use the technology and the children do, how do the parent manage that? Okay. Because okay. So it could be accessible to anything. Right. Right. Okay. There's no parental. So you're saying the stopping. parent piece is, uh, is an important. Part. Absolutely. Yeah. Because that's the only way they're going to manage. Just like teachers, when they come here, they can't access certain websites. In my daughter's school, they only access programs that the that the school built. Right. They can't access it and they can't go anywhere else. They can't gotcha, use Google. Gotcha. So you're talking about parental controls as it relates yeah. to the internet. Okay. And how to do that, right? Yeah. But you're that's, teaching the parents that. So Marcella? Yeah, but that's only if like you said if you only have access like at home. Right. Because right. if you go to yeah, yeah, if you go to the library you can do whatever you want to do. At the library there aren't there and they you can't do everything you want to do in the library. Right. You yeah. can only go so far and okay. at the library they they have all kinds of security. Yeah. security. At school also. From, from experience, home. because my kids, are, I had to sign a, a, a basically a permission slip for my kids to use certain things that they um, use on the website because they use blended learning and they spoke. Okay. So, um, you, so there is parental control. Like you're writing a, a contract saying that I agree to these, you know, is an appropriate use of the website in and out of school. So if my daughter go to the school, um, go on my website at home and she does something inappropriate, I'm responsible because I had to sign that contract. Mm. Okay, good point. Good yeah. point. So get that contract. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So that's something that the schools need to be looking into. Mm -hmm. Okay, number six. How do teachers need to partner with parents to support the students who are participating in blended learning in their classroom? Have a pilot thing like they have the pilot professional. Have a pilot professional. Say it, say it a little louder. <laughs> <laughs> Have a meeting for parents to understand the, the process and the work and the work that goes into mm -hmm. the pilot program. Mm -hmm. okay. So we'll be the students to okay. learn. So it was like today. Similar yeah. to this. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So have more yeah. of this. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Everybody agree with that? Yes. yes. Um, okay, so 
Are there other community partners and resources that you think should be brought into this work that would help support your children's learning? Yes. No, the community itself. The yes. banks, the libraries, libraries financial wine, institutions, yeah. um, other, schools. other businesses, yeah. other schools, collaborations. Because one thing um, I did see in the Nellie May when we um, did that project was that the students had brought in um, a financial group um, to partner with them on that on a thing that the activity that they was doing. So you know, getting to know the resources in your community and stuff like that, and getting them involved, that that also preparing them for the real world, college readiness and stuff like that. So most definitely, mm -hmm. and work else, too. Anybody, anybody else we bring right. into this? to um, brought into this room that would help support your children's learning? Uh, Our parents that? ourselves. Okay. Okay. All right. Are there other... Oh, I was going to say the same thing. Uh -huh. if, okay, last question. If you thought about your children's school, your child's school three years into the future, okay. and that has become a state-of-the-art blending learning school. So if, if you thought about your child's school Three years into the future, and that is that it that it has become a state of the art <laughs> blended learning. It's <laughs> all blended out. Would what would what would it look like? So three years in the future, what would this blended? I think all of us need to go back to school <laughs> <laughs> to really figure no, 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 out what's no, no, going no. on. No. All of us will need to be blended in. I just hope that that the, a pilot program like this don't take our jobs away, teachers' jobs Absolutely. away. Because technology, I have a neighbor, she's in fourth grade. She goes to school online. Mm -hmm. Fourth grade? Her fourth daughter? grade. Wow. And she goes to school online. No, she have this I said, so how do you, no, she she's just, yeah. she oh. just learned online. So what she's talking about, there are curriculums online, mm -hmm. K-12, yeah. um, that uh, parents are taking advantage of. Because of all of the other stuff, right? Because of behavior with right. the school safety, all right. the other things. There's no and they they decided <coughs> or any other they decided that they, this is the this is a path that they want. And there's more and more parents doing it. Mm -hmm. um, no we, we just don't talk. It was great to have the opportunity to take online classes. So the idea, you know, um, we have to understand what it is mm -hmm. and understand how to leverage classroom with the technology. So that, I think, as, as parents, something that we should all try to learn more about for ourselves. So at least, so we'll have a little bit better understanding. When, our, when we get information that's coming home about blending learning, when our kids are coming home with password and username to go on the computer, we have a better idea what the teacher is talking about, what, mm -hmm. what the school philosophy is. So you're talking in reference, you're speaking in reference to having more of these yeah. sessions. sessions. I, yeah. And, and I must agree with the parents. I, I, I'll be the first one to tell you, you know, I have told you before, Millie, I am not that great at the computer. My kids teach me a lot of the stuff that mm -hmm. I do know. You know, because mm -hmm. I have to keep up with them. Yep. Yeah. Because I was taught the old school way, so I feel like because all this technology is changing, you know, it's up to it. I would like more workshops of this sort so yeah. that way I can know what my kids are being taught as well as helping them along the way. Absolutely. Because if I don't know, I can't, I can't help them. And I want to be as involved as much as possible. And the only way I'm going to keep that involvement is knowing what they know. Yep. That's right. And you know, yeah. and you make a good point. And I, I just want to say that in, here at Buckley, there's a teacher's prep program. And wouldn't it be neat to see a teacher teach a computer class? I mean, see a student teach a computer class. Yes. That would be, yes. so be that, cool. That would, that, so that's one of the things I'm talking to the principal about, um, where they can earn a little extra money right. to teach. You know, not only that, but it will encourage them. That's right. Yes. That's right. <laughs> it will encourage more kids to put on the bandwagon and say, we can do that too. Mm -hmm. that's right. Maybe they won't become teachers. Do you right? uh, this Hopefully. Is not, this, this is not a question on here, but I'm going to ask. They can also use that as you? a way of having them um, volunteering or whatever. That's right. I mean, I'm all for volunteer, but at some point we have to pay. We all got to get paid. Uh, oh, I know <laughs> that's motivation. So, yeah, but, so, but, but what I want to say is, this is not on here, but yeah. I want to say, is this a way for us to come together as partners on one mission? Yes. 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 Okay. I have something. Let me, let me get her, and then, I'll, and then you'll be, the, you'll be, you'll send us off. Okay. <laughs> the kickoff. Um, blended learning in the school. 
is a mixture of seeing it, hearing it, and actually doing it. But I think if you do a blended learning in between the teacher, the parent, and the student, I think you'll have more success, success. Mm -hmm. because the teachers don't understand why the kids are absent. That um, I went to a workshop last week Tuesday at Achievement First. All of the Achievement First um, parents were invited to a breakfast, and a mom asked a very um, good question. If the teachers and the principals don't know that dad is in jail, mom is working two jobs, or kids live with grandparents, um, how do you expect them to communicate with you in the classroom when they walk in and you're judging them because they're late or because they weren't here for two days in a row or um, you don't know if they're homeless but trying to keep up appearances in school you don't know if they have the money because now most of us are in uniforms which I love because the kids that don't have the money you can't tell who has it who doesn't and I think it didn't reduce all of the problems in between the peers, but it, I think it's gone down. But if the teachers or the school counselors, if not the teachers, the school counselors can set home visits. Because I know when my son was in preschool, we had home visits twice a year. And my door was always open. But it gave the teacher a little insight, not to invade the parents' privacy, but just a little insight as to why is he struggling in class, or why is he coming late, or? Better connection. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just want to say something about what she just said, because you know that, that, that's the part that bothers me the most, because I talk about that a lot, that teachers do not know what we go through on a daily basis. Unless you're actually in the school hands on, you don't know. And as, as so many times, me volunteering my kids' school, <clears throat> I had to let the teacher know, not to get in their business or tell their business like, listen, that child just suffered something last night because it's the same thing that impacted me as well. So I'm able to go to that child and talk to that child because we can relate. A lot of the teachers cannot relate to us. That so that's why it's very important if you have time. I know there's a lot of parents that is only single parent homes, but if you have time, volunteer. Let them know. But a lot of parents are scared of letting the teachers or um um, um, people, administrators in their homes because they're scared that they're going to be judged or, or misunderstood or referred to yeah. DCF and stuff of that matter. And it's like, that's not even the case. All I'm asking is for help. Everybody need to pick me up at one point in time. So it's just that unless they know and they really live in our community and walk in our shoes on a daily basis, they would never, ever understand. Now you have someone that can relate somewhat because maybe they lived here and dealt with some of this stuff and moved out. That's one of the ones that that do not have a clue of what's actually going on in our community. Because what goes on in your community does impact these kids Absolutely. on a day to day, day basis. basis. Mm -hmm. And so, they, not to not to cut you off, but is there a way that you think that they can use us as parents definitely. to bridge that gap? Yes. Mm -hmm. Some of us just working in the classroom as parents to help assist the right. teachers. Right. And then they can communicate with the teachers about what's going on in the community. Right. Mm -hmm. You don't always have to go to the suburbs. And, the teachers. and you know, that's been the case. A lot of kids feel comfortable, oh, um, Janaya's mom, or you know, Miss Kiki, this is what happened. You heard you heard what happened? That boy got shot. That was my little cousin. But I can communicate with them. I can relate to them because, yes, I heard the same thing that you heard. So, you know, how did that make you feel? What can I do to help you? You know, stuff like that. If you need me, I'm here for you. Teachers don't have time for that, whether they want to make the time or not. They just don't because they got like 20 plus kids that they have to worry about. But that's what we're here for. And some so, of them don't want to have So, I'm going to, in the essence of time, so I think we're all on the same page, right? Mm -hmm. So you know, we, we, we are in the community, and I think that, that the district, like you were saying, should capitalize on our talents, right? Yeah. To bridge this gap, right? Okay. So like I said before, volunteering is very important to, to, to find out, to, to be engaged in the education. But at some point, they can hire parents that are able to do this work to bridge that gap. Mm -hmm. And you're probably you're gonna send us off. No, I am. 
when you, you asked me if I was quiet, that answers my question. That did not answer my question, but these are the styles of teaching, right? Whether it's auditory, it's hands-on, or what? These are the styles of teaching, and which I'm glad that you will bring it into the classroom. When we were having that graduation at the peer, at the library, that's when I approached John Van Farr, and I said, I need this. Who's John Van Farr? John Van Farr is a state senator, okay. okay? And I told him right there when he was walking out, I should have I want to see this in the book, because I brought my book, and I said, I want to see this. Okay, I'm glad that that is coming in in this format. However, um, when we are talking about, let us encourage or propose for looping of parents or community liaison parents. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's how we will get the community and the teachers to be looping so to get to know the family and educate your children. Mm -hmm. And let us all prepare to be 21st century parents. That's mm -hmm. cool. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> session. Well, this is not really our session, but, you know, we're partnering with HarperCollins.